What's up guys and today we are going to be looking at weird weird YouTube accounts. Sorry if you hear Wah! Wait a minute guys. Okay, I just have to close my door. Okay. So the first weird YouTube account that we have is here. Then let's go to what's it called. Um, this is the my my um my best subscriber that I have. A minute, guys. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Okay, so you go here, and then um, you go to um, down. Go to fake Terraria. This is his video. And so after that, you look on the thing, and then it says right here, freak, freaky Roni. Look at this. Look at this weirdo. <laughs> wow. Look at that. He's so weird. Okay, let's look. Let's look at another one. I'm just going to show you that one. The little weirdo. Okay, so the let's, let's just look up weird videos. Weird videos. If you're crying, this is my little sister, okay? Weird videos. She sure does cry a lot, okay? Weird videos, weird videos. Okay, yeah, that's, that's ill. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, no, 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 no. No, no, this is weird. This is weird. Ah! Okay, well, that is was weird. Um, okay, well, the second one we have is somewhere right here on the screen. It is right there, stung by sting, or stingray live on Phil. Okay, why would they want to see, why would anyone want to watch Someone stung by stingray. Stingray. Okay. Why would anybody want to watch that? It's just. It's just ill. Why would somebody want to? Let, let's just watch it. Let's just watch it. Let's see what it is. Gosh. Is this family life lessons? Is this wait? I'm turned up. What is this? Oh my gosh. Okay, what is this? He's playing football on the beach? What? A snake! I just saw a fish! A dick? I saw a flounder! Okay, well... What is this? Okay, why why would you okay? Well, this is weird. Oh my gosh, stupid thing. Oh my gosh. Okay, that the second one is right here. Quilled by porcupine dude this guy. I'm Cavity Peterson. And that is the North American porcupine. As you can see, he's covered in quills. Get ready, we're about to enter the spike zone. Okay, well, what is this? This guy seems stupid, doing bad things to himself. The 
This morning, the crew and I fueled up and set off down rugged mountain roads into the high country of Montana, where we would get the chance to work with one of the most common, and proudly, the second largest road oh in North gosh. America. This is all my stu this is stupid. Off down rugged mountain roads into the high country of Montana, where we would get the chance to work with one of the most common, and proudly, the second largest road in North America, the Porcupine. And this is true Porcupine territory right here. All these tall pines, hillsides, perfect place for them to be rummaging around, and all this loose soil for uh, roots and berries and all sorts of delicious porcupine treats. These black and white forest dwellers why may would look you want to, cuddly, why would you but want as to we all know, when I was about to experience, they're equipped with nature's reactive armor. Just beneath a layer of sensitive guard hairs, you will find thousands of barbed quills that will make any would-be predator think twice about considering the porcupine for an entree. Now, I have never seen a porcupine before in the wild. I never worked with a porcupine, so for me, this is going to be a really unique experience. Now, the reason I'm able to get so close to this porcupine is because it was actually raised in captivity. So this little guy is used to being around humans and sometimes cameras. Now, this is the second largest rodent that lives in North America, trumped only by its aquatic cousin, the beaver. Now, porcupines have incredible claws. They got four claws on the front and actually a vestigial thumb, which allows them to quickly climb it looks trees like he's to trying to be predators. like Baird Grylls. You can't get to a tree in time. What they do is exactly this. Show the rump side and all those quills. You get your nose close to that, and it's going to be a face full of spikes. Today, my goal is to intentionally get quilled by a porcupine. Yes, you heard me Why? right. I'm Why would you want to get quilled by a porcupine? I'm going to show you the right way okay, to that, remove that's just weird. barbed quills from either yourself or in most cases, from the snout of your curious pet. Now, Why told, would you want to be quilled, I okay? This Why? This example, I'm going to get close to 40 or 50 quills in the back of my hand. I hope you guys enjoy this at home. This will no, no way I will not enjoy one. this, okay? This is weird. Why would you want to get quilled to on purpose? The, the only one who's going to experience any discomfort is me. I'll tell you where you don't want to get quilled in the face. That would be pretty bad. Heck right, yeah, you don't. Agitate those and you want to get cooled in the what? In the hand? Are you ready? Uh, I love how I get myself into these things. One, two, ooh. Yep, there we go. That's a handful oh my of quills. Gosh. Now the ones on the top of my hand oh my really gosh. aren't that I'm bad. not looking right now, guys. I'm not right looking. There. Can you see how deep okay, those are into my finger? Uh, it hurts smooth oh, right now. Oh, God. I, um. I think they touch bone. <laughs> it hurts a lot. Um, I think most of them are going to be pretty easy to get out. Those two are going to be extremely painful. Mm. Well, I got a handful of quills here for my little friend the porcupine right there. I'm going to show you guys how to get these out of either your hand or your dog. I have a feeling this is going to be pretty painful. All right, come on, let's go. The one in my finger hurts so bad right now. Now, it's most likely that your dog is going to get quilled by a porcupine. And, you know, you might think, oh, I'm just going to pull that quill straight out. It's not going to work. These have microscopic barbs on the end. And one of the cool techniques of the porcupine quill is that once it's in there, it works deeper and deeper and deeper. So you want to get these out as quick as you possibly can. I never recommend that you go out and get yourself quilled by a porcupine. And the reason that I did this today was to show you how to remove quills from your hand. And the reason that I snipped off the top oh, of the quills why. is that it actually releases pressure inside of the quill. This is still the barbs, weird, okay? Why, why would you want, to do, what what you want to do it just for YouTube? Gently grab the quills, twist them, and pull straight up. I'm going to remove the ones that aren't as deep first. I want to get all those barbs and those little points out of there uh, because they can't cause an infection, and that's the last thing that I want to happen. If you were a mountain lion, bear, or coyote, you got a face full of these quills. I mean, it's dehabilitating. I can barely move my hand, and these animals wouldn't be able to then go out and continue hunting. And I can see why eventually this could cause a large predator like that to die. Woo, my hand hurts. Okay, these are the last three. It's not like a Band-Aid. And you don't just pull it off. You just pull these out, it's gonna rip all the skin out with it because of those tiny little microscopic barbs. Okay, I'm gonna twist and pull straight up. Jeez. Oh, ah, oh, that hurt. Oh, you can see the blood pouring out now. You get that shot with the blood? Oh my gosh. Yeah, that really hurt.
You good? Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, that real, I like, that was like, I could feel it pulling all the way out through the skin. Ow! Oh my goodness. Wow, I mean, that was buried into my hand up to the white. That is a serious quill in my coyote paw. Oh, moral of this story, do not get quilled by a porcupine. I hope you guys learned something here today. If you are okay, well, quilt, these are a lot of top, weird videos. The pressure, grab, doing. twist, That's and pull it out. Um, I'm Coyote this, Pe this is weird. Okay. I'm Coyote Peterson. Get ready for a very special Behind the Adventure. Trail Season 2 has officially launched. I've had a couple of great episodes out there so far. The one where I get chomped by the collared mm -hmm. lizard, and the one where I show you the three species of scorpions that live in the Sonoran Desert. Now, we've gotten a lot of questions where you've asked, do any scenes ever get cut out of the episodes? As a matter of fact, there's quite a bit of content that doesn't make it into each video. Here's a pretty cool scene that didn't quite make it into the collared lizard episode. Hope you enjoy. The Sonoran Desert is absolutely beautiful. And while most of the time it's hotter than an oven, as the sun is starting to get lower in the sky, the temperatures are dropping. <laughs> if I dare say the temperatures are dropping from like 108 to maybe somewhere around 100. But even still, that will help bring out some of the wildlife. I love being on the search for reptiles, but this environment is hostile. And I always seem to find myself running into the biological landmines. Whoa, watch out for that cactus. Especially the spiky ones. You know what that is, right? That is a teddy bear, Choya. But let me tell you what it isn't. Cuddly like a teddy bear. All you have to do is get close to this plant and pieces of it will pop off and stick into your skin. I imagine you probably want to see that in action, so... Ow. <laughs> Not fun. And then you try to wiggle and get them off and they only get stuck in worse. I just pop it off with my snake stick. Ready? One, two... Oh, no! It just broke in half into two pieces. Yikes. Oh, my gosh. That thing is really wedged into my hand. Holy oh, crap. I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> gosh! Hold on. It's multi-tool time. Probably should have used that in the first place. Oh. Why would you Teddy do that? Joya. Not the cuddly kind of teddy bear that you dream of snuggling up with. This is this is definitely worse than the porcupine. Oh, gosh, look at how swollen my hand got from those choya spines. Oh, moral of the story, do not bump into the choya. Ooh, yeah, that one definitely hurt. And in case you're wondering, my hand is just fine. So next week, we're going to try something totally new. We're going to be on location on the West Coast filming new episodes of Breaking Trail. And we're going to bring you guys... Okay, up. one last one, and then I'm going to stop I'm the I'm Coyote video. Peterson. I'm out here in the creeks, walking around barefoot. And what do I come across? A toe bite. Ugh. What's a freaking toe bite? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, you know what I just found? You see that right there? Okay, I am walking around out here barefoot in the crease, looking for salamanders, and we stumble upon this. Hold on, let me grab it really, really carefully. Ugh. Oh my god. Ugh. That is a giant water bug. Also known as a toe biter, because if you walk around in a pond or a swamp, or in this case a creek, and you step on one of these, you're gonna get a bite you'll never forget. This is not something that I want to be bitten by. 
Yeah, this is probably the biggest one that I've ever seen. They can actually fly, but they're out here hunting around in the creeks for anything that they can come across. Um, I would imagine that these can probably eat California newts, some of the other salamanders. They will inflict a bite from this. Ooh, oh boy. <laughs> he just grabbed me with his, his front pinchers there. Uh, gosh, that made, that made my heart jump. He will inflict a bite from up front that basically injects a venom into the prey and tears their insides to mush, and then they drink it up like a slushy. This is one then of the most bizarre you want to get creatures that you that. ever come across. The giant water bug. <sighs> all right, I'm putting him back in the water, and I'm getting oh. my boots back on. You know, it's all fun and games, walking around in the creeks barefoot until you come across a toe biter. I think for the rest of the day, these keens are staying on my feet. And if you're out there watching and you've ever been bitten by a giant water bug, you know exactly why I put my boots back on. I'm sure a lot of you are saying, oh, coyote, you didn't let that one bite you. <laughs> I'll get bitten by a 50 pound alligator snapping turtle, but a giant water bug, okay. no thanks. Um. Sorry guys. I'm just going to do this one. Well, last, Coyote Pack, last, last. you're going to want to stick around for this one, because on this Behind the Adventure, we're talking animal bites. Ow. Ah. Oh, yeah, can you see that? Holy cow, that hurts. Yikes. What's going on, everyone? Well, this past week, you were witness to what I would define as the worst animal bite I've ever received. And it came from the only venomous lizard in the United States, the Gila Monster, which also makes it the perfect time to answer a question from Skylar Martinez. Now, Skylar asks, Coyote, have you ever had to make a trip to the hospital from getting bitten by an animal? Holy cow, all right, um, whoa, those teeth are super sharp. Mm. Great question, and I can obviously see why you'd ask it. Now, over the course of filming our Brave Wilderness shows, I have been bitten, stung, or pinched by many animals, including snapping turtles, snakes, scorpions, sulpigids, purple shore crabs, and now, unfortunately, the Gila Monster. Oh. Yeah, he got me. He bit me. You sure? Yeah, he definitely bit me. Let me keep them. Oh. Yeah, he got the whole top of my thumb. He yeah, passed the GoPro, and he got the whole top of my thumb. Now, sometimes these interactions with the animals are intentional to either dispel a myth or to prove an educational point. Unfortunately, mm. other times they happen by mistake, and this was truly the case with the Gila Monster. I got the camera a little too close, let my guard down, and then BAM! I was on the receiving end of one very painful lesson. Now, whenever we're out there in the wild filming, even though it may not look like it, right there behind the camera is always a safety team ready to jump in just in case I am injured. And again, this is why I always stress, if you are out there in the wild, never try to approach animals, and always make sure that you have somebody with you just in case an injury does occur. Now, despite the fact that the Gila monster is venomous, I didn't go to the hospital because there's no anti-venom for this species. And as you learned in the episode, I pretty much just had to endure through the pain. And trust me when I say, it was just like lava coursing through my veins. So Skylar, to answer your question, Fortunately, no, I've never had to go to the hospital for any of the times that I've been bitten by an animal. With that said, though, I must stress that you always leave getting close to the animals up to me. However, if you are out there in the wild and you are bitten by an animal, make sure to seek medical attention as quickly as possible. Everybody's body reacts differently to trauma, guys, and it's always better to be safe than sorry. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you next week. Okay. If you like this Behind the Adventure, watch the full episode. No. And don't forget, that's, subscribe to join me in the... That's the end of the video. Okay, guys, hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you all next time. Peace out. Wait, did I say... Please like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. Yeah, guys, hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you all next time. Peace out.